What's going on guys? Welcome to another tutorial video. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you guys a few of the commands for updating, deleting, uh, and so on. So uh, the next thing I want to show you guys is we're going to update. So to update a table, the idea of updating is to retain a lot of the values but maybe change one of the values. Uh, so a common task for me sometimes is whenever stock, uh, stocks split their stock price or companies split their stock price. So let's say they cut it in half, but they, you know, they issue double. Um, I have to go through the database and literally cut their prices in half, or even some of them will be um, chopped into like a quarter, right? So anyway, um, that's a common case for me, but uh, I mean, people have all kinds of reasons to want to update the data. So to do that, what you'll want to do is you call update, and then where you want to update, taula, and then set, and so set is what you're going to change. So you're going to set username equals what? Well, we want uh, to capitalize the S in sentdex. So we're going to say uh, username equals sentdex. Um, and then where do we want to do that? Well, we want where, capital where, username equals lowercase sentdex. Simple command. So uh, we do that. So we'll hit enter. And we'll see uh, three rows matched, three rows were changed, and no warnings. So now let's run the select all again. And, and just like a lot of uh, prompts, you can usually just hit up, up, and get to like something you've already pre-typed. So we're just going to do that, select all from Taula. Hit it, and now we can see that we were once all lowercase, now we're all uppercase. Awesome. So now... Uh, the other thing I want to show you guys is you can set limits to how many you want to do. So this is a relatively small database, but let's say you have like a database that it has, you know, 5 million rows to it. You might think in your head like, okay, this update will affect, you know, the last 200 or, or it's going to affect about 200 rows. But your query might be written in such a way that, nope, it, it affects 5,000 rows and you just, that's not what you were planning for. Um, there is something in place for that where you can say, uh, so let's, in theory, lowercase one of these. So we could say, uh, update taula set username equals, uh, we'll just lowercase again, sent dex, where username equals capital sent dex, and then we throw limit one to it. So this will limit the query to only do it, run that query one time. So we hit enter, and sure enough, only one is changed. We can view them again, and now we see that one of them is a lowercase s, and the rest are uppercase s's. So limit is useful, not necessarily always for just update, but also uh, for uh, deletion, right? So it's useful so you don't just like bone your entire database, right? So at least with update, right, you can you can usually do like the, the absolute opposite, right? If you did the wrong thing, you can just do the opposite and, and you're good to go. And if that doesn't do it, then usually you're like maybe a few queries to fix your mistake. But uh, with delete, that's not quite the case. There's no, you know, undo button here. So um, let me first show you an example of a delete. So let's delete everywhere that has the lowercase s for the username of sentdex. So what the delete will be delete uh, from, and then the table, taula, where username equals lowercase sentdex. But again, we're going to limit this to one. So let's run that. And we can see we got one row. We can view the, the table. And now let's run that query one more time. And now you can see uh, that it says one row affected. Let's look at the table. And now, would you look at that? It actually deleted a low, or an uppercase sentex. And this is why you add the limits to it. Because you in your head might be thinking, oh, that's going to be just fine. I'll just lowercase. But here's the, here's the kicker. It's, it's case insensitive. So instead, you know, you might have thought, oh, I'll just get rid of that one. But if you didn't limit it, you would have just cleared your entire database, <laughs> right? So there, 
is uh, the reason why limit is useful. Because again, there is no undo button. So what I can do though is I think we still have our or yeah we do have our inserts. So welcome to my tutorial. We'll insert that one, and then we'll also insert. Really, it's somewhere here. The uh, Bill Gates maybe. No, we uh, want to insert the Obama one. So now let's uh, view our database again. Okay, so we've kind of repaired it a little bit. Um, so so now we're back uh, to where we started and lesson learned. Use limits and understand that var cars are not case sensitive. Now, the next thing you can do uh, to kind of check yourself as far as how many you're going to wind up with is you can say, before you're going to run a delete, you can say select all uh, from Taula where username equals uh, sent dex. Oops. Sent dex. And you'll see uh, that it returns actually three, all three rows, right? Even though only two of them are lowercase, and the third, or the well, the first one is an uppercase. You can see what it returns back to you. So before you run that delete, you could select all and just see uh, how many rows are we pulling. You know, because if it's millions, then you can just select it and just get the number of how many rows there are. And you're going to maybe print them out, right? So that's a method where you can kind of check yourself before you, you know, pull the trigger and release the hounds. So now, um, now that we've done that, the next thing I would like to show you guys is let's run one more insert, and I'm just going to use um, a lower number here. So let me, I'm just going to like straight up delete this zero. Uh, <laughs> and actually, let's just do it so it's easy enough for me. So we'll do that. So now we've inserted one more row into this table, and you can see this timestamp occurred very re recently uh, after uh, January 1st, 1970. So now uh, what we want to do is let's say um, you've had a period of time. You just made an update yesterday. And, oh, there's my message. Oops. You've just made an update yesterday, and uh, you went to bed, and you woke up the next morning, and you, you were looking, and it turns out that you made a huge mistake and now you've just filled your database since the time you went to bed with just a bunch of junk and you just need to get rid of all of that stuff right how would we do that well what you can do is not only are there limits but you can also use greater than or equal to signs and you can use and so let me show you an example so let's say we wanted to delete everything after this time uh, but not so we want to delete everything after this time, but not after this time, right? So let's just let's work through a query like that. So what we're going to try to do is get rid of, uh, and in fact, actually, let's let's make make it since we have two of these, let's make it so we get. Well, I guess we'll just get. Yeah, we'll just plan to get. Whoops, what has happened? <laughs> ah, crud. Let me. Uh, I wonder if I can just delete. Nope. <laughs> Hopefully that'll... Yeah, okay. So just got a syntax error. Anyway, uh, we'll get rid of one of these thanks Obama things. So, because we're not really... We're not that thankful to Obama, <laughs> let's be honest. So, the next thing we want to do now is let's say we want to be good, good little coders, and first we'll run our select query. So, we're going to say uh, select all from Taula where... Uh, and this time we're going to call time, and we want to select everything where time is greater than 13,854, and time is less than, uh, and we're going to pick this very or this number right here. So it's going to be 13,855, and actually, shoot, it's going to get, uh, man. So really, we actually want to get, I guess we'll end up getting rid of a couple rows because the way that we uh, reinserted this stuff. But we can get, I guess we can get rid of the 69th. Uh, so we'll just do 70. Okay, so that's just our select query. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can see that it did indeed return one row, and it was this row. So now we're confident that this is only going to delete the data that we wanted to delete. So now we can just repeat this query and go back over here and just 
instead of uh, running this select, we can run a delete. So delete from Taulo where time is greater than 13.854 and time is less than that time. Run it. Query OK. One row affected. Um, let's find a select all. Okay. Shoot. <laughs> uh, trolling all day. There we go. So now we can see that we ran that uh, that deleter with anything that was between those two timestamps. So this is also pretty helpful. Like let's say you you know within your program you've got maybe some sort of ACP right or moderator or MCP right where admins or moderators can do something like delete a thread or something like that right. And so you might have a message pop up that when they hit delete uh, it says hey are you sure you want to delete you know 15 posts or something like that right. This way, if they see, you know, hey, are you sure you want to delete 16,424 posts? You know, they might notify you instead of clearing out that entire form section, right? So it's just a good idea to maybe do that check first and then run the actual delete query. So all of that should really cover the basics of what you need to do, like, manually uh, to work with your database. And now what I want to do in the next video is actually start working within a Python script and go ahead and connect and you know show you a basic query via a Python script. Um, so obviously there's more advanced things that you can do like importing and exporting databases or merging tables and all this kind of stuff and, and we might get to that later but since most of my viewers are, are interested in Python, storing data with Python and then uh, maybe using something a little more powerful like MySQL um, over SQLite, I figure out, well, that's, that's what I'll be showing you guys. So anyway, that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Uh, we'll continue working with uh, Python Anywhere just so it's, cause it's easy and it's connected to MySQL. Um, but it, it'll, it, again, this will be another scenario where it's the same across every VPS that you're going to use. Once you've got the database and the table made, then you'll do this. So anyway, as always, Thanks for watching, thanks for the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.